Hey there, so this is the Russell Hobbs Lux Cold Press Slow Juicer. I was on the hunt for a juicer seeing as we're experiencing a lot of heat wave down here in Australia and also mainly for the benefits of consuming healthy fruits and vegetables. I wanted a compact one that would be powerful enough so that it can extract as much juice as possible but not take up so much room on the bench top. Also the price was another factor. I've used a centrifugal juicer before and the price range of those are fairly affordable. But with cold juices or cold pressed juices in particular, the price range does hike up a lot. So I did some digging around and I was able to find this beauty at the store but was not able to get much information about it um, online or on YouTube. As I normally like to read reviews and watch demonstrations before making any significant purchases. So hopefully this video will come handy. Um, for those looking into buying cold pressed juices or slow juices in particular. So this is the top of the box, it's just showing you some of its features. So it's saying it's compact, you can do up to a litre of juice with the container and did I mention it has two year warranty so that's a pretty good deal. Alright so let's get started, this is the actual machine, it does have some weight to it and I'm holding the jar right now. I'm just fixing the plug which has to be inside the residue outlet so there's an inner plug underneath just like what I'm doing you just need to click that in that residue outlet like so make sure it's in that's what the instruction said so I'm just following the instruction and I'm just going to put that on the machine and there is a little groove there on the machine as you can see where the residue outlet um, goes or where it's placed Okay, I'm currently holding the filter. I'm using the fine filter. The only thing that I actually forgot to show you is the other two filters that comes with it. So it comes with a frozen fruit attachment filter and a coarse filter. But this particular one that I'm using is a fine filter. So if you want less pulp and, and um, more juice, then that's what you would use. That's the head or the grinding head. Um, has some weight to it as well. And I'm just showing you how it's supposed to be placed in, inside that jar. You'll see that you hear the, hear the click. There you go, that's the click. <laughs> I can't speak. Okay, so this one is the feeding chute or the, yeah, the feed chute top. And you place that. There are um, arrows that you need to align it with. You twist it. And then there's also these uh, locking, I think what it's called, locking plates on the back just like so, just to lock everything together and that's the food pusher, what I've just put in there and I think I'm about to, no, I haven't plugged it in yet um, that is the containers for the juice and the pulp so the one with the handle is for the juice and then the one without the handle is for the pulp the juice container goes where that juice outlet is which is the one with the cover with the lid and then the one with no lid is for the pulp and that's where the uh, pulp container or the residue container goes. So I'm just going to plug this in, turn that on and on the back is the power, so the switch. So if you press it upwards to turn it on, downwards is to do the other motion, so reverse motion and that little button is to reset, the little uh, circle button. So this is what we're going to be juicing today, a whole heap of uh, kale, cucumber, carrots, half a lime and some pineapple. I'm not going to be using all the pineapple, I'm just using the one that I cut up and as you can see there's a whole heap of kale there. This uh, is actually really tasty and refreshing. So I'm just showing you where the uh, fruits and vegetable would go and yeah. I'll turn on the machine in a second so you can hear the loudness, there you go. So that's the machine turned on. It's actually not too bad, it's not that noisy. So I'm just putting in some of the pineapples now. And pineapples are fairly soft, so it does give you and it's a lot of juice in pineapple, so it's giving me a lot of juice there. You can see the pulp is um, getting spit out from the, uh, the residue outlet or residue container. Okay, I think I'll be putting in carrots fairly shortly. There you go. So these are the carrots now going in. There you go. So you'll see there's going to be some orange liquid coming out of it because of the carrots. This is a good idea to try and get as much nutrients in your body as possible juicing. 
So I think I'll be putting in the kale next. So I'm putting in the kale now. As you can see with leafy, well, particularly with the kale, it doesn't have much liquid to it. There is some and it will go a little bit foamy as well. But with the kale, I'm trying to put cucumbers in between putting the kale because cucumbers does have a lot of water in it and so it will push out the kale a little bit more nicely and you know we'll get more juice out of it and then I'm putting the lime last and I think it's pretty much nearly done so this is what it looks like straight after juicing you can see the pineapple some orange it's not orange but the orange color is the carrot and the leafy kale and lime and cucumbers now it is pretty frothy as you can see this foam there so what I'm doing is actually just I've got a spoon I'm just mixing it thoroughly because I don't like it too frothy and I'm just gonna use this strainer you can use any strainer that you have I've got this small one so I'm just using it to try and drain as much froth out of it as possible because I do like to just drink the juice without that much froth so it's just a personal preference really so that's what I'm doing I'm just tapping it a little bit so that the juice will come out nicely I will show you the finished product in a moment but for now I just wanted to show you how easy it is to actually clean after juicing because some juices can be a pain in the butt to actually clean up so this is what it looks like straight after juicing um, try not to leave it for hours so I'm just going to take that uh, filter out and basically disassembled everything there should be one two three four five six seven pieces all up but they're small parts um, this brush actually comes with it and I'm using the end of the brush to get all that you know pulp out of that uh, residue outlet so I'm just rinsing everything so it's easier for me to wash it and one of the important things to actually make sure that this filter is washed properly and the instruction says that you should only scrub off the concave surface which is that surface um, of the filter just like what I'm doing I've also used some dishwashing liquid just a little bit and I've diluted it with water so it's not super strong because it does say that you know you shouldn't be using anything strong um, like abrasive or anything like that to wash this with. It also claims that the parts are dishwasher safe but I'm not too sure if all of these parts are dishwasher safe anyway. I don't have a dishwasher so I'm just using it by hand. I mean washing it by hand. Again I'm just using that end of the brush to get all that gunk out of this grinding head. So you just basically use it, use it for any um, grooves and crevices that you can't get your fingers to. And I'm just rinsing it now. So that's how pretty much easy it is to wash this juicer. As long as you don't leave it for hours because obviously the longer you leave it the more it will dry and it will be harder to clean it. So the sooner you get to it the better you know, and the uh, quicker you can clean it. You can also see that I'll be using that sponge. I just put a bit of uh, dishwashing liquid again. Uh, diluted it with some water and I'm just washing that uh, feeder, so the food feeder. As you can see I'm putting it through it so it can get clean thoroughly and that's how I would clean it. Now you'll find that there will be a lot of pulp left and I really don't want to throw it out but I wasn't too sure what to do with it so what I'm doing is actually going online and searching for recipe uh, where I can use the leftover pulp and uh, suggest you could do the same thing as well if you want to do that so that there is less waste in this juicing. So washing is nearly done, I'm just going to rinse that brush and I'm going to leave everything to air dry. Now going back to the machine, as per instructed it says that to leave it uh, to cool down, I've left it to cool down for a bit and it's unplugged and I'm just giving it a wipe with some uh, damp paper towel as you can see, just wiping around it because there is a bit of liquid around that machine as well so you just want to make sure it's all nice and dry and I'm just giving it a quick wipe all around. Voila, so this is the finished product, I've just put some ice in that glass just to keep it cool and I'm going to pour that nice green goodness it's so refreshing I'm telling you it is really tasty and it's good for you so that's a bonus there we go that is our cold press green juice or should I say super juice hopefully this video was informative and if it was please give it a thumbs up and I will enjoy this green goodness cheers hope to see you on my next video Bye for now.